I, I got involved with the club in 1986 uh, following a phone call from the secretary Gordon Adamson saying that they were having a problem with the showers and was it something that we could uh, look at for them. So I said certainly and made an appointment to meet Gordon at the ground to look what the problem was. Um, we established what the problem was, or I did, and um, we then were given instructions to carry out the necessary repairs to hopefully put the showers right. Anyway, we sorted it out, but uh, I, I went up on two or three occasions following that to make sure that it was okay. And I um, started going up and then I started to watch the football and um, as all amateur clubs uh, of any sport, they always wanted people to volunteer and help, etc. And uh, that must have been easy touch, I think, because Gordon said, you know, why don't you fancy coming up, uh, you know, on a regular basis? You know, he says we can always find you something to do, you know, if you want to get involved with the committee. So, I, you know, I says, well, I'll give it a go, you know, I'll come up. And so I went up on match days, and you know, I had bits and pieces to do. I used to work in the car park and. You know, and then we, you know, we get and they have a working party on a Sunday morning, and we go up and, you know, take a paintbrush or a brush or an hammer or whatever, and uh, it just went on from there really. And you know, more I got involved, more I went up to watch the football, and you know, I got going to every game, and then I started going to away games, and uh, and in that season, uh, Emily did uh, they did quite well. They got to the the final of the uh, of the FA Vars. Um, and uh, you know we went to Wembley, so you know it was a an early baptism really of uh, of, of tasting some reasonable success at, at, at amateur level. I was sort of went from a voluntary basis and agreed to join the committee, which was basically a band of merry men and women who wanted to do something for the club, and they sort of grouped them all into committee, and we had a monthly meetings, and you know supposedly. You know, put the rights and wrongs of the club to, to the sword and carried on from there. And then uh, Roy Shirley, who was the then chairman, he decided that he didn't have time to to devote to it. And uh, you know, I was nominated to to take his place, which I think it would be after the Bolton Wanderers game, which was in '91. Um, so it would be I don't know when we had the annual, annual meetings then, but to probably be in that summer of uh, of '91. To, to carry on progressing at the the level we were at, it, you know, we needed to sort of implement some some meaningful changes and uh, and run it in a more business-like way. And um, you know, we managed to achieve that. And uh, you know, the success on the field continued, you know, for for quite a number of years. And uh, that, in a way, you know, made it difficult to run the club because the. The team was running faster than the club could walk. The players' expenses became more, which was generated that through the invent of the Premier League, which it, it, people won't realise. But even in the early days, when after the Premier League had been formed, and you know they, they went onto these massive wages, it just pushed everything up at the lower leagues, and uh, you know clubs were finding it difficult to, you know, players had, had sort of come for match expenses, then they were wanting more than expenses and it get getting where, you know, it was you need into a, a wages situation and it was dragging clubs into a, a tax situation and it just got more and more difficult the whole time. But, you know, you were in this rolling s s scenario where, you know, if you, if you, to keep up with the performance, which obviously, you know, the, 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 the club and the supporters expected, you know, you, to keep achieving this level and, um, somehow, you know, for, for quite a number of years, we managed to to keep going with it. Well, when I became chairman in this uh, in 1992, um, the club had been rocked by uh, Jerry Quinn, who had been the manager for quite a number of years. Not sure how many, because it was before I got involved. Uh, but Jerry, for some unknown reason, decided that um, he was he wanted to get to a higher level of football, and he took the uh, 
he took the manager's job at Altrincham, which was fair enough, you know. I mean, everybody's you know moves on and and and, and looks to their own uh, horizons. But what uh, really rocked the club was that um, he took with him about six players. And again, um, you know, this was this was money driven because Altrincham were in a were in a higher league than than Emily, and they were paying the, their players on a regular basis. So he took um, he took, I say I think it was six players. So uh, Emily was left them with the decision of you know appointing a new manager, um, and we appointed Steve Codd, who'd been. Um, a rock in the in the Emily team for quite a number of years. A really, you know, hard centre half um, had uh, had given his all to Emily, and he was getting towards the end of his playing career, and he was looking to 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 manage. He was also a school teacher, which um, you know we thought, well, yeah, he's, he's you know he should have a bit of leadership experience there. But unfortunately for Steve. Um, he never really could get himself from being a player to a manager. Um, he, he didn't make the, the managerial decisions because I think he didn't want to upset some of his mates. So unfortunately, um, I think that was probably the, the first time I had a, a really hard decision to make in that I had to call him in and give him the old um, solid Steve, thanks for your services, but you know we're going to have to look elsewhere. Um, so. Uh, Steve uh, went, uh, went by the way and in the interim period um, Mick Pamant who had been a stalwart of the club as a player uh, back in the 60s and 70s and still a, he was a member of the committee and, um, and Roger Wood uh, again was an ex-player they were put in, in temporary charge as caretaker managers uh, for a number of weeks till we get at time to um, assess the situation. Uh, we looked around and um, by pure coincidence um, Ronnie Lavin had uh, resigned at Frickler. Um, Ronnie, Ronnie was known to a lot of the other people on the committee who had been uh, with Emily longer than I had. Um, in the, he'd had quite a bit of success at Frickley. Um, so we decided to um, to interview Ronnie, and um, to be honest, I was you know I was surprised and elated you know when he accepted the job because um, you know it was refreshing to to hear you know what he had to offer, and again it was a situation of you know could the club actually cope with what Ronnie Lavin was trying to do. Ronnie um, had been a, an ex-professional international footballer, um, and uh, you know to say that you know that somebody was football mad was an understatement. Ronnie just lived and breathed football 24/7. Uh, he did nothing else. Um, okay, he was only a part-time manager for uh, for Emily, um, and at the time when he started with Emily, he, he, he did some. Uh, some work for Nike, and they also had one or two other irons in the fire with football. But um, his his um, sole aim in life was to be a winner. You know, he'd have the last training twice a week. We we play two matches a week, and on the any other time he had, he'd, he'd go out watching players Sundays, or he'd go midweek to to watch players. And um, you know, with players coming in from Bradford and Sheffield and um, all over the place, and um, of course, all that um, really culminated in the 97-98 season when you know we hit the jackpot um, with the FA Cup run, you know, which got us through to the third round of the FA Cup when we played at Upton Park against West Ham United. Um, you know, I mean that cup run. Was absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, we've beaten a lot of good clubs on the way up to the first round, and then you know we beat Marco after a replay. We beat Lincoln after a replay. I mean, the Lincoln game always sticks in my mind. In that, you know, they were a fourth division club then, 
Uh, we went there, we were drawn away, uh, we were winning 2-1 and the referee played 7 minutes extra time and they scored in the 96th minute to make it 2 apiece. You know, and that you thought, you know, where's, where's this happen from? But uh, anyway, we went and played them at the McAlpine Stadium as it was then and um, we beat them on penalties. A uh, fantastic game. We won it on the Tuesday night and the, on the following week on Saturday we were playing at West Ham. You know, well, to try and get organised for a part-time club who'd never been to this level, travelling to a first division club in London, was just, you know, and the press were all over it. I mean, the, you know, the, you couldn't move for them. I mean, they had a press conference at Emily and the, 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 the place was full. There were just hundreds of it. I mean, it was, it was fantastic. You know, and uh, the uh, I think we took uh, you know something like 2,000 people to to West Ham. Unfortunately, we lost to one, but we put up a great display, and uh, you know the West Ham uh, crowd was really appreciative of uh, of our skills and what we'd done, and uh, you know we had a very good uh, a very good day and a very good weekend out of it, and. Um, you know, that, I'd say that was a, probably the highlight of the, of the, of the clubs uh, since it started. But, um, you know, by ground grading, which we all had to adhere to, uh, was kicking in and it was just getting harder and harder. And, um, you know, we're, we're basically, when we got to, I think it was 99, um, the, the, the green code document which we were given then to, um, to, to, to be graded by, you know, with, I think it, it had six different uh, things that we had to do which weren't achievable, you know, because of the, the nature of, the, of where we were. And, you know, it was, it was a, a decision that wasn't taken lightly and it was a decision that had to be made that either you keep progressing with the football or you've got to stop now and stay where you are because you can't progress any further because your ground won't allow it. We got invited to a meeting that um, Wakefield Rugby Club was organising because they were trying to get a new ground uh, just outside Osset at Junction 40. It did cause the club a lot of problems in that its own supporters turned on it and um, basically, you know, they were really dead against the move and said that, you know, we'd no right to take the club out of Emily. Um, you know, it was an Emily club, but yet they wouldn't own up to this, uh, own up to the fact that, you know, we couldn't improve the ground because of the, the cricket was the, one of the big problems in that we were, we were a three-sided ground and three-sided grounds were just completely a no-no. Um, Ron had... Uh, wanted you know better training facilities because you know there was nothing at Emily we couldn't train on the pitch because it you know it it uh, it racked it up um, and we put a proposition on the field above the club um, we were going to do another make another pitch and a training facility up there uh, so that we could run the you know the reserves and the juniors etc and what did we get the NIMBYs in the you know the, the same people who again, you know, supported the club supposedly. No, you know, we don't want this in our back garden. You're not going to have this. So, I mean, you know, it was a just a no-no situation. You know, in that we, we were trying to deliver what the people of Emily wanted, mm -hmm. in that they wanted a successful football club. But all of a sudden, because it inconvenienced some of the people, they, they, you know, they didn't want that. So, you know, the club was left really in limbo and it had to make a decision. Um, to to move forward. Well, we we decided that we'd have to move to keep the club going forward. So we went to 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 Bellevue in the uh, start of season 2000 2001, and then um, you know they put because they wanted us in for the new ground to hopefully in, in, increase their possibilities of getting more grant money. Um, they sort of ran with us for I think 18 months and we didn't actually pay anything to play there. Um, and then of course the, you know, the, the ground, new ground wasn't going to happen and they started putting the screws on us that we had to pay some rent and 
what have you and then you know they were getting in financial difficulties and um, you know we I uh, came up against the the guy who was trying to sort it out and he, he said you know oh, you're gonna have to you know start paying you know at least uh, you know 1500 pound a game to play here you know and I just laughed at him you know and said you know well that's just crazy you know I don't know where you come up with that figure but you know it's just not achievable I mean you know what gates we get etc we eventually decided to to look elsewhere and um, we'd heard of a place called College Grove uh, which was the had been the home of Wakefield Rugby Union so we decided that we'd move and go there but again we soon found that the you know the landlords were difficult people to deal with um, although we were paying what we were believed to be a, an all-in price of 1200 I think it was 1200 pounds per month to play there and use it as much as, as, we, as we wanted etc etc uh, the all-in figure just was never an all-in figure and um, you know we were always you know it was hard work working with them because Every time I went to a meeting, you know, they, they looked at me as I was wanting something off them, but all we were wanting was the fair deal that we were supposedly offered in the first place. But they looked at it in that we were trying to get something extra, which we weren't. And um, anyway, you know, we, we battled on and we, we, we did a lot of improvements to the ground. We got it into some sort of shape and we were quite happy there. And then out of the blue, um, they gave us notice to quit in saying that um, you know they were going to um, develop the site to, as a as a hockey centre because that was the main uh, college grove was a was a centre where it was um, it had been rugby union there was the, the Wakefield Hockey Club there was a Wakefield Shooting Club there was also a squash club and there was a, a, a Crown Green Bowls Club. So after they said that you know we were out from there, we were really struggling from there. Um, we got a ground share agreement to Osset Town um, to play up there, uh, and that only lasted a year. The the, the um, what is it? I'm not sure if it was a year or two years, uh, but the pitch was very poor. Anyway, we eventually um, decided, you know, that. Um, Osset Town was not the place for us and uh, I still had connections back at Bellevue and although it was a new regime that was in there and um, they, again they were, they were trying to then get a new ground at um, the other side of Wakefield and of course they were interested in getting us on board again through football money to hopefully get them a new ground. So, uh, but that um, you know, we went back there, and uh, it was it was uh, it was okay. Um, but then uh, the um, they were taken over again. They were in difficulties, and the the the, the last uh, lot that have come in, which um, I wasn't privy to the um, to the negotiations because at this time I was um, I was actually not. Uh, I'd, I'd re well, I resigned as chairman the previous year, um, which would be uh, 2012, um, and um, the figures that they put to the new chairman were just not achievable, and uh, unfortunately, um, at the end of last season. Uh, 2013-14 season, uh, the club decided to fold. Yeah, obviously, when when something comes to an end, you know, if you've been involved with it as I was for something like 28 years, you know, it's um, it's sad, you know. But I've always been a, um, a fairly realistic sort of chap in that. You know, everything's got to be, you know, if it's not sustainable, then what's the point in doing it? And um, I think, uh, you know, um, I, as I said, I've been out of it for, you know, the best part of 
12, 18 months really. I'd, 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 I'd been saying for quite a number of years that I was eventually going to finish because I'd done my time. Um, I'd retired from business um, and so, you know, as, as regards having any financial in, interest in the club, it, that was no, no longer possible. Um, and I could see, you know, that you know the, the club was just really staggering along. It was no longer going forward. Um, as I say, unfortunately, you know, the the thing that I said of you know having a club, you know, with no home, no supporters, no money, no prospects, um, didn't really enthuse me. You know, the divining things that that um, that's always stuck in my mind is that. You know, the, the FA um, and the ground grading regulations drove us out of Emily. And yet, um, you know, 10 years down the line, um, or even less than that, you know, the ground grading was relaxed and we could have stayed at Emily. <laughs> you know, now, I'm not saying that, you know, one was right and the other was wrong, but, you know, when you look back at it over a period of time, um, you know, we. we we, we only moved to uh, try to keep pace with the football and then you know the football then you know declined and uh, the pace of the finance and everything took over and we just couldn't cope with it. it to be honest you know the, the, the whole thing about football's changed completely you know, there are not the leagues below now that like they used to be. I mean, everybody knows the Huddersfield League is not as strong as it used to be. Um, you know, there's a big emphasis on junior football, but I'm sorry, you know, to get from a junior football into an open age league is just a huge step. And unfortunately, you know, that um, the professional clubs now are, are basically stealing all the, all the young kids. And then, um, you know, when they get to an age where they should be playing for clubs like Emily, they're getting discarded by the professional clubs because they say they're not good enough. Mm -hmm. And the kids are, are, you know, are so disenchanted with the game that they give up. You know, they don't come into football. So, you know, the, 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 the wheel that was there for, for football to grow, you know, 20, 30 years ago is no longer there. It's a different environment altogether. Mm -hmm. favourite moment in every football club has got to be the FA Cup run in 97, 98. Um, that was an incredible time. Um, you know, right from the, um, you know, playing, I can remember us playing Nuneaton and, you know, drawn away Nuneaton, drawn away Morecambe, drawn away Lincoln. Um, and then, um, you know, all the replays, penalty shootouts. Um, organisation to be done, you know, to to um, to get us, you know, there. Um, it was just uh, it was one of those things that you know you say that it was, it was a one of and it certainly was. You know, I mean, uh, I think uh, you know from a chairman's point of view or being anything connected with the club that uh, you know if you've achieved that then. Uh, Okay, it might be a fairy tale, and uh, you know, and these things do happen. But uh, you know, to be involved with them at the time is just brilliant, and uh, I wouldn't have really missed out on that. It's uh, it certainly was a um, a brilliant experience. The worst um, time that um, they had at Emily was in the. Um, you know, in our in our eyes as a committee, in the late 90s, um, you know, we were trying to drive a club forward that had great prospects of maintaining itself at, 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 at that footballing level, and um, I think that um, the disappointing part of it was that. You know, we'd, we'd quite a loyal band of supporters at that time, and they had supported the club. Only being, you know, with the, you know, the feet coming through the gate. But I mean, that's, you know, that's the way people are. You know, that 
they would come through thick and thin and they'd watch them, you know, if we went through a, a difficult time, they'd, they'd, they'd still be loyal, you know, but then to, for them to, to actually turn on the, on the committee and the decisions of the club that were purely made in the interest, as we thought, of, of taking the club forward, um, you know, was a bitter blow for us to take. You know, it's, it's difficult to, um, when you're the chairman, you know, you're always looking down and, 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 and you've a lot of problems to sort out and things to, you know, keep happening and things, you know, different regulations to keep up to. Um, I think, you know, with the majority, as I say, we used to get probably three, four hundred people, but they just used to come and support the football. They wanted the welfare of the club to do well, but, and they, you know, they'd pay the gate money and they'd join the raffle and stuff like that. Um, you know, which is fine. Uh, you know, then we had the people who were, you know, members of the committee, as it used to be. I mean, we did then, it did form into a limited company and and that so, and we slimmed it down from, I think, about 15 to to seven of us, purely so that it helps in, um, in decision making, really. Um, you know, some people felt they got their noses pushed out, but it wasn't a matter of pushing noses out, it was a matter that it was easier to make decisions with seven people than it was to try and make it with 15 people. And, um, you know, I appreciated every one of them. I mean, everyone, everybody who contributed, you know, a, a, a sort of, a, you know, a small amount. I mean, I started, you know, early doors. I used to help the old Geoffrey Jezepel being there for goodness knows how many, 50 years or more, you know, doing the car park. And, you know, he knew everything about the club. And there were other people like him. I mean, Gordon Adamson who'd been secretary for 35 years. Peter Maud who'd been president for, I don't know, 30 years. Uh, all people like that, they, you know, they were steeped in Emily. And, um, you know, we managed to pull it all together. Um, you know, like all things, you know, you lose a few people on the way. Not everybody, you know, likes the decisions that, that are made. Some, some people feel offended by them. You know, but overall, you know, I think we had a, a good crew. We got by. Um, we made things happen when they needed to happen. And, um, you know, overall, I suppose over all the years I was there, um, uh, there, it was, there, were, there were a lot of good times, there were a few down times but you know I don't want to dwell on those really, you know I just want to remember the good times and uh, you know in 28 years that I was there uh, you know I enjoyed the majority of it and uh, uh, as I say it's, uh, it's a sad day that the things folded but um, you know these things happen.